is Jennifer Alden. Um, I am from Paulsbo, Washington now. And I wrote Cruel and the sequel Altered, which comes out in October. And my favorite dessert is... That's a hard choice. It's like a big commitment in my life. Um, chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Hi, I'm Anna Banks. I wrote Up Aside and Love Triton. I'm from Niceville, Florida. People are not nice in Niceville, Florida. Um, my favorite dessert is Reese Cups. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. I wrote Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. I also enjoy Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, but I'm particularly fond of really any kind of pie, mostly cherry pie. She's from Los Angeles. Oh, and I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs>that doesn't exist but it should. I just coined it. Boom. Jennifer <laughs> Alvin, copyright 2013. Brother husband? Brother husband. Have you Instead heard of sister, sister wife? wife. Uh, ah, uh, copyright 2013. <laughs> I, I look forward to your cult. Thank you. I don't know what just happened here. I always um, go for the, the bad boy so I'm going to be a bad boy. Okay. I mean I'm not going to be a bad boy. <laughs> That's my, that's Stop my there answer. because this is going to get bad fast. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think bad boys are good for flings. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm all for a fling, but you know, for commitment. For commitment. The yeah, good boy. I'm like, yeah, I've got a commitment. Well, she already, gets both. So cause I get both because you have the beta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does the dishes. The bad boy does the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to do all the yard work and everything right? else. And then he rebels because he's the bad boy. Exactly. This is not gonna work. <laughs> That's why she has them both. So He's like, I've got to go brood in this corner. I can't do the dishes. I'm like, whatever. Brood while you're doing the dishes. <laughs> Get them done. <laughs> But I do want to take time for a palate cleanser that's set in our world, so I can just use real world swears and say she went to the kitchen and ate a peanut butter sandwich. I am doing both. I currently have a new adult that's set in the real world, and I'm doing that so that I can work on one that is uh, more fantasy based. So I, I don't want to commit to any world. I want them all. I'm doing I'm doing a contemporary. Um, next, and then after that, I'm building a major world. So the contemporary is like taking a break, I think. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's mostly like a palate mm -hmm. cleanser for all of you. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like the sorbet. Super contemporary nice. sorbet. Yeah. Like it's the dessert on top of everything else. Because like it's not. everything already has its name. Like an iPhone is an iPhone. You don't have to be like, what yes. would be a clever way to say? Yeah. <gasps> Um, 
Um, well, there are certain songs that are associated with particular scenes and characters for me in the Grisha trilogy. Um, the one that uh, easily comes to mind is um, the placebo cover of Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush, which is sort of the Darklings theme song. Um, so whenever I have a scene with him, I always sort of cue that up. Um, and there's a song called, um, I think it's called Winter Song by Sarah Borales or Borales? Borales? Yeah. Borales? I don't know how to pronounce her name. I don't know how to say that. And there's another woman on it too, whose name I'm blanking on, but um, that I associate strongly with the first book in the series. But my, my playlist changes from series to series, mm -hmm. and when I'm writing, I listen mostly to stuff like Glitch Mob and Bass Nectar or anything that doesn't really sound like, you know, the, the it essentially amounts to white noise. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, I listened to Glitch Mob for the same reason, but I was like, I wonder how they feel about being white noise. Well, you know, they don't have words. <laughs> I know, I Even, know. Even, like, classical music to me has, like, such a strong, like, it has such a strong period feel, and it usually has such a strong, like, dramatic or emotional thrust. Mm -hmm. And soundtracks, I know a lot of people write to soundtracks, but I feel like it's, like it's directing the scene, and I'm totally uncomfortable with that. So I just need, like, something, a beat, and that's enough for me. <laughs> This is the beat. That's, yeah. the, that's the beat. Yeah. Does that help you with the writing? It does. Okay. You write, her, her first drafts are in iambic pentameter, which hot. is a rare known fact about Lee Bardugo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I didn't know it either. Spread the word. Spread the word. I am like Lee in that it changes, and a lot of times it changes on what kind of scene I'm writing. So if I'm writing an action scene, it's probably going to be the glitch mob. If I'm writing some heavy emotional scene, Florence and the Machine usually comes out. Um, I really like Rabbit Hearted Girl is one of my like huge, cruel playlist songs. And then there's a band called um, Daughter, and they have a song called Youth and another one that I'm blanking on now that I think are really poignant and haunting, and I like those. And then for the second book, I listened to Garbage 2.0, the, the album, the whole time, because it felt like this just angry, take back the world music, and that was kind of where Adelise was during that. So, but then when I was writing my contemporary, I switched over to um, Taylor Swift, who I've never listened to before in my life. But I felt like this will get me in the so mood. Defensive. I well, I, my husband There's was no like, shame. My husband I came into no the office and was like, "Are you Taylor. listening no. to Taylor no. Swift?" And I'm like, yes, "I have Katy Perry on my playlist." Me. No shame there. No, don't I mean, judge me. I don't listen to music while I write. Um, I kind of prep beforehand. I I used to try to listen to soothing sounds. Like I had this soothing sounds of the rainforest CD that I tried to put on, and then just out of nowhere, this monkey was like, <laughs> and I was like oh. You know, so I had to like... It was not soothing. No. <laughs> not at all. That no, was a jar. Did you listen to that song I gave I just spelled the word. Um, the Fitz Pleasure song? No, not yet. No, okay. <laughs> so, but I can't listen to music while I'm writing, so if I'm about to write a kissy kissy scene, I'll pick some 80s love songs and start prepping that way, or some Bruno Mars, pre-cheesy Bruno Mars. Pre-cheesy. <laughs> um, There's no such thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> that first one. <laughs> so, very first one. Oh, which is very first song I love.